Hi there everyone, welcome back to the Royal Society. My favourite topic in the world is actually not in this world, it's the moon. I love anything to do with the moon and Keith has really pulled something out of the box today. Quite literally, we have this box here. I think we should maybe open the box. I don't think we should, I think yeah. we should put this oh, away and maybe... Oh. No, of course, no we're gonna, of course we're going to open the box. Here we go. Look at that, we've got some shiny, shiny medals there. And we have a little map in the top of the box as well. And obviously these medals are from the old Soviet Union. Obviously it involves space, it involves the Russians who were mm. famous protagonists of the epic yeah. space race of the 1950s and 60s. So you see we've got a map of the moon there, very familiar of course. However, there's a flag on it. There is, there's a little flag there on the moon in what I've now learned is a place called Mare Imbrium. And it is a red flag. Yeah. We know the Americans famously put men on the moon first, but this is hinting at an earlier event, isn't it? And there were obviously mm. six human landings on the moon. This is before that happened. This is a Russian landing on the moon. They never put people on the moon, but they certainly crashed things into the moon long before humans were there. And this was the first crash, so to speak. This is the first man-made object to land on another world. It was a probe called Luna 2, or they call it Lunik 2, and they just fired it at the moon full speed, no slowing down to go into orbit or to land softly. It was just, can we hit it, like shooting it with a gun. So we're going to have a look at this, Albuquerque. This is the new scientist from the 24th of September, 1959. Yeah, so this is the old new scientist. There is a leader here which talks about it, getting to know the moon. And it starts by saying, an analysis of the signals from Lunik 2's instruments just before it collided with the moon has provided a null result of some importance. The moon has no external magnetism. At one point, it describes the craft in a slightly curious way. It is no denigration of the Soviet work to say that we know very little more about the moon as a result of the pennant capsule now smashed or buried on its surface. The pennant capsule, well, these are the pennants. They wanted to really make their mark. They didn't want to just leave a smashed up little probe. So they made this capsule covered in pennants. It was almost like a soccer ball with yeah. all the pennants as little sort of uh, tiles on it. And there was even a little explosive in this capsule so that when it hit it exploded and these capsules would go as far as possible across the lunar surface. Yeah, so they would litter the moon. I'm imagining they didn't go too far. But uh, well, it hit at pretty high speeds, so whether they survived it or not is anybody's guess. Yeah. Obviously, we've never been back to that spot, although Apollo 15, my favourite Apollo mm. mission, did land it's quite close, close, close yeah, by, but yeah. not close enough to go and have a look. Mm. These didn't no. go to the moon and come back. These are like replicas? Well, or? They, they kept some back for commemorative purposes, but these were clearly presented to the Royal Society, and the date of the spacecraft is on there. This is September 1959, so we know it's Luna 2, and the map gives the exact spot. But there's an interesting postscript here because as a result of Luna 2, there was a raft of lunar articles, and here's a really interesting one. Look at this. This is 1959, and there's an article here that Keith's pointed out where Professor Massey... Harry Massey, yes, fellow of the Royal Society. Fellow of the Royal Society, of course. That's, okay. why, that's why Keith's showing it to you. Yep. And he has speculated about men on the moon in 10 years, question mark. Yeah. And do you know what? Less than 10 years later, <laughs> because it was July 1969, mm -hmm. we did have the first humans setting d foot on the moon. Does he not know the engineering problems involved? <laughs> he called it. Here's the article itself. And again, it's been put in the context at the start here, saying Russian scientists have attained the historic distinction of sending the first rocket from the Earth to the moon. And then we have Massey's article. So for this sensational headline, men on the moon in 10 years, which did turn out to be correct, mm -hmm. the only real line I can find in the whole article that backs that up is this rather interesting one. Yet I believe that more will follow, and soon. I cannot rule out the possibility of a man landing on the moon within 10 years. That's a cagey scientist for you. Yeah, it's not exactly, <laughs> it's not quite the bold claim that we had on the, uh, on yeah. the cover, but there we go. You've got still. a seller magazine. And Massey still called it, so there we go. Here men from the planet Earth, first step foot upon the moon, July 1969, 50. Are you ready for this? I am. Are you going to have a, you have a guess? Do where, you know, where does the race for space start? In my head, this is, this is something to do with Sputnik because it's not a million miles away from the diameter of it. Here we go. Oh my word. Yeah? Yeah. Liking it? 
Yeah. Shall we get it out? 